Welcome to From the Ashes, the Dungeon Crawler Network podcast all about Ashes of Creation by Intrepid Studios. Bear witness to the rebirth of the MMO RPG genre from the ashes of an industry that has left the gamers behind. I am Magellos, founder of the Dungeon Crawler Network, and we are coming to you live from the Mighty Beard Tavern. And I am joined by my amazing co-host. First off, we got Stormslord. How are you? And he's muted again. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, storms. I'm we can't hear. I'm yelling at you, but you can't hear me. There we go. There we go. How about you? <laughs> I'm good. That that just seems to be our thing each week. Is I'll yep, say something. It is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good time. Starting the show off right. We also got Alpha Soul. How are you? I am doing great. I am doing great. Excellent. And the one, the only Crowjack himself. Go Leafs, go. All right. This again, is not a sports podcast, didn't yeah. you? <laughs> again, we're talking about the sports balls again. I don't know. I love sports ball. Sports balls. It's the devil. You're the devil. <laughs> anyway, we got a fun show planned for you tonight. We are all really excited for this show. There's some really good stuff. We've got uh, some apocalypse news to go over. We're going to recap some of the apocalypse testing that went on this week. This would be the week of the 9th of December. We had a live stream this very afternoon that previewed some pretty cool Alpha 1 stuff. The actual Alpha 1, not apocalypse so make sure we separate that little dividing line if you will between the two and of course we've got a question a good question that we're not going to argue about at all we're not going to argue about it all is the legendary pass pay to win and if we have time we're going to go ahead and jump on into the mailbag but uh of course I got to say hi to the chat room. Hello, awesome chat room. You guys are amazing for coming out and uh, watching the show live at twitch.tv slash Dungeon Crawler Network. I encourage you to check out the show live because guess what? We do a post show after this and it's a lot of fun. So stick around. Even when the show ends, we come right back like two minutes later and do a post show. And those are always fun. Of course, if you miss it live, if you are a patron over at patreon.com slash dungeon crawl network, such as our new patrons, Eric D and Kenneth S you see that segue is pretty nice. They're supporting us over at patreon.com slash dungeon crawl network. You can gain access to the post show there as well. It's a lot of fun. We cover a lot of random topics. It seems and some things that we wish we could have said on the show, but we didn't, you know, it's fun. All right. Um, before we move on, we had two new iTunes reviews this week. That's pretty awesome. And I actually pulled Very them up nice. ahead of time. So, and I'm going to read these. First one's a five star review from Austin Mall. DCN is great. Thank you. Been listening for a long time for Ashes. You guys are great. I cannot wait for it to be released. I'm looking forward to play the game with you with you all really great podcast keep up the great work thank you austin mall and another five-star review from john johnny 67 thanks for keeping me married wait what anyway that's how amazing this podcast is it's Mm -hmm. bridging the gap between two married people (laughs) that is right it is the podcast that keeps me married by not shocking my wife into that i'm a video game junkie again Mm. Well, on a real note, thanks, guys, for keeping me up to date with the little time that I have. Uh, do have. It greatly helps to keep up. And hashtag Trolljack for Community Manager. Woo! No. Trolljack. <laughs> no. One, I'm not a troll. Two, no. No. I don't want to be in charge of that community. No. No. Dear heaven. But again, no. anyone, if you want to help support us, you can do that by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes. It lets people know that we are a real podcast, that we say real words, and sometimes they matter. And those reviews really do help. So keep that in mind. It's greatly appreciated. Guys, let's mm-hmm. go ahead and jump right on into the show. First off, in the news, the uh, Apocalypse got its own website now. And, of course, you can activate if you're yep. in the EU over at uh, is it aoc.my.com. I think that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, we also have the Ashes of Creation site up. It is not the new website, so let's keep that in mind. But it actually does have some pretty neat lore on it. There's now a link on the main site that you can check out. The world of Vera is ending, and you have two options. Fight for survival or die trying. That's actually what it says. Yeah. <laughs> and it makes sense from the perspective of the battle rail, a way to tie the well, battle rail into the lore. 
That is interesting. Fight for survival or die trying. So does that imply that some people managed to stay alive while we were gone? Or, you know. Uh, interesting. Yeah. Or maybe I'm just looking, reading too much into it. If well, you remember, the Tolnar race are the survivors of the oh, that's right. event that yeah, went yeah. to the ground. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. No, and they actually have some uh, a pretty neat stuff on there on this site. And actually, they have a little bit of lore. So you can check that out at apocalypse.ashesofcreation.com. They have the trailer and they just have seen their buzzwords and stuff. But now you can now register to play because... Well, actually, let me check this out. As of when this podcast goes live, so if you are listening to us on YouTube after the fact or on any of our audio formats, iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Google Play, Spotify, or SoundCloud, and Player FM, I think, as well, um, this will come out on the 17th, so the following day, Apocalypse is coming out. I'm excited. I'm excited no, for I'm that. I'm forward to that. Yeah. Um, something to actually do to get us back into Vera and also be earning some of those cosmetics. So that'll be fun. Yeah. All right. So that was some of the big news from there. The next thing we have is um, actually, wait. We got an email about that too. I think that's Alpha Soul. You had something to say about that. Oh, yeah, that's right. So. Uh if you hadn't seen it, or if you don't know about it, we received specifically an email uh, for the launches of Apocalypse that uh, Intrepid Studios sent out to everyone. Uh, and I thought it was particularly good at explaining what's been going on and answers in one place and kind of puts down in official writing the, uh, you know, the purpose of Apocalypse, the purpose of what's been going on and the direction uh, for, you know, everything that's going on. So they stated, you know, quite succinctly in the email, uh, the goal, you know, of Apocalypse is to test combat. They stated what their intention was for it, you know, where they were going with it. They wanted to get to a hybrid, you know, form of combat. Um, and, you know, and then they finally kind of uh, described what Apocalypse was, what, you know, it, what it be, uh, what you would eventually get from it, you know, what the purpose is of kind of playing for it. Uh, and then finally, they kind of listed all the benefits that... Uh, you know, come from testing Apocalypse in this fashion. Uh, and there were numerous kind of laid out that they put down. But I thought it was really good specifically because, you know, anytime somebody kind of has that question, you can always just refer them back to that email or cut and paste kind of that response back for it and mm -hmm. just go from there. Because be previously before that, we, all we had was if you were following Ashes quite diligently, even then it was kind of tough to uh, pull apart like, yeah, did they say this then? Did they say that then? Uh, and they just kind of had released all this information piecemeal, and it's nice to kind of see it all in one place succinctly there. So, yeah. No, you're you're right, because I know as a lot of us as content creators, I know myself, Crowjack, uh, Alpha mm -hmm. Soul, you know, those who stream and whatnot, oh my goodness, it is such a pain in the rear end. Every time we stream, there's people going, wait, this is a battle royale now? Like, what is going on? Because, you know, it, it hasn't been explained super well in the past. I'm, I'm just going to be frank about that. It hasn't been. So seeing it now being explained in a much more succinct manner was really nice to see. They really should have just taken that and put that on the website. And there you mm -hmm. go. I'm hoping they do it on their new website. Right? New yeah. website coming out. A new launch of that website. Hopefully, it'll have everything mm. beautifully explained to everybody. That would be the hope. <laughs> then, <Yeah. laughs> then we as content creators could just go, just go look at the website. <laughs> yeah, my simple yeah. sentence, my simple one sentence response to everything is MMO testing starts in the spring. That's it. That's all I say. MMO testing starts in the spring. Mm -hmm. That's what I say yep. every single time. Indeed. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But before we do, we actually had some apocalypse testing this week. And uh, we actually have a test that's supposed to be starting about 15 minutes ago, but I'm actually looking at the Twitch channels and nobody's playing yet. Hmm. They're yeah. waiting on us. Yeah. They're waiting on us. See, Stephen, well, that was really great that you would wait on this show mm -hmm. to finish before going <laughs> live. Go. That's really cool. Props. That's what I heard. <laughs> yeah, they're just well, waiting. So they're waiting. They're waiting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Any, well, I, I've, I've learned that any time they put a time... You know that hey, it's coming up. Give it, give it thirty minutes, and then Especially it'll be good. Especially at this yeah. stage of their alpha testing, like it's always late every time. Every yeah. time. 
We're going to talk about that testing, um, and you'll notice the title of this show was Legendary Experience, because we're going to ask that question, but I had posed around a earlier title that <laughs> I thought was funny. It uh, is funny. It's funny. Um, it is. The original title for episode 73 was going to be Left Click to Dislike. <laughs> If anyone gets the <laughs> Tinder reference, there you go. <laughs> but there was a an issue that happened this week that was pretty funny. If you use the lunge attack, it would yeah. break your left click, and you could yeah, not they had to hot fix that real quick. <laughs> mm. I, I managed to kill somebody uh, with that bug. Actually, it was in the very beginning. I lunge at them, and I thought, you know, at first I was lagged out because nothing was happening, and I just kept mass clicking on it, and realized I couldn't attack. So I happened to have the Archmage's staff. And so I just kept spamming Q, waiting for it yep. to go dodging, and then ended up killing him. <laughs> yeah, so that was sort of a lot of the experience people had. They, In their defense, they did actually fix it very quickly, and it wasn't meant to be like a vindictive title. I just like puns, and I thought it was funny. Um, but we didn't go with that because we have a much better topic to go for. But what was your guys' experience? Uh, Alpha, I know you played for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It was so. I, 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 I'm sorry. Let me start over. I think, or if you, if people remember, Storms and I were talking about how we didn't think that, um, in the current state, it was last week that we would think that they would be ready. Uh, and the good thing is that they made some drastic improvements in between the following week and this week. And so it felt a lot better. Uh, Melee felt like it was in a better place than it was before. Overall, it feels just you know more responsive and you know just in a good state it was pretty fun to go through and play i ended up going and getting in some you know singles matches it was and it was just a good time all around crowjack what about you i can double verify that melee feels so much better after i adjusted my in-game sensitivity and made it feel more natural hitting things in melee felt great shooting things with the nightfall bow felt great fps felt pretty good Overall, it's a really good experience. Yeah. So, oh. did you get any time to play? Uh, not yet. Hopefully tonight. <laughs> I know <laughs> you were actually going to run an event for uh, the Hands of Fate Guild, but then we got the notification that everything's going to be three hours later. Yep. It's like mm. uh, I was ready to go. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, yeah. all right, I'll wait. Yeah. I would like to say one of my favorite things I'm actually doing right now with the Catfall boots because because melee is in such a good spot and you can actually aim and do things. If any of you have ever, if any of you have ever played Final Fantasy, there's a there's a class called the Dragoon that does jump attacks. That's mm -hmm. ex exactly what I've been doing. Basically, is oh, jumping okay. up with the cat ball boots, using a halberd or a spear, and just diagonally attacking them. It works hmm. wonders. It's like you hit them and you immediately jump again. It's so fun. And speaking about the catfall boots, one thing I've noticed about the servers is we get to a point where I'm able to watch somebody jumping with catfall boots, time when they're going to land, lunge at them, and I'm actually connecting and dealing damage. So the yeah, server stability awesome. has gotten to a point where that brief moment they're on the ground before they jump again, I'm able to time it and hit them and deal damage and everything registers, everything connects, and everything's timed beautifully. Yeah, it's yeah. Very that's nice, nice timing. Mm -hmm. mm. So... I know uh, at one point, I think we had talked about this, where they decided that they switched the hit scan and projectile on two of the weapons, mm -hmm. and then they switched it back, I guess. So was it the Nightfall bow now is confirmed hit scan, correct? I was in a game accidentally with Steven and Alex. They were doing testing, and they're on these test accounts, and they accidentally queued up with me, and they happened to stay in the game once they realized who they were with. It was kind of cool. And I asked them in the middle of that, like, what is hit scan? What is projectile? We're dying to know. Nightfall bow. The short bow is hit scan. You click on head, you deal damage. The long bow, the bow of miasma, is a projectile, a very hmm. slow projectile. The wand of light, technically, is a projectile, a fast moving one. So the travel time is really quick. So sometimes it can feel like hit scan, but it is confirmed a projectile. The only question I didn't ask, I forgot, was the crossbow. Crossbow. Yeah, I didn't yeah. think to ask about the crossbow. In earlier alpha tests, the crossbow was most definitely hit scan yeah, because yeah. those were the ones every time that we got picked off from like <coughs> the far other side of the map, mm -hmm. it was somebody with a crossbow of revealing mm -hmm. every single yeah. time, every single time. Um, honestly, every single time I've played, I haven't picked up a crossbow. I can never find them anymore. It's like they made them incredibly rare. I had a hard time finding catfall boots in the last um, bunch of games. For some reason, it felt like the spawn rate for the catfall boot was decreased. 
You brought you know, up like playing with the tables. <laughs> they could be playing with the tables, right? Figuring out, yeah, how do we yeah. want to do this, right? Well, mm -hmm. the time they're going to do that. But you, know, you can always seem to find a legendary drift or a rifter or whatever. The hell <laughs> yes, the one that no one wants. Everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. what what do you have on your bar? Five legendary drifters. Do you want one? You may have one. <laughs> in, in fact, it will probably do more damage if I don't use it and just whip it at your head. You know, just <laughs> I don't <laughs> hate the drifter. I'm starting to learn how to use it. The, uh, it's almost a homing weapon. Almost. Almost. It yeah. feels kind of like a very loose, slow turning homing weapon. Okay. And it's fascinating. Interesting. I just yeah, test it. Next time you get it, gonna test be fun. it. Every single it, it, time I pick it up, I think it's a mace, and I look at it going, "All right, I got him." <laughs> oh, you're not a thundering mace. You're not a thundering mace like I thought you were. Yeah, no, it is really upsetting. But uh, what was the other thing? You made a really good point on one of your live streams, twitch.tv slash crowjack. If you're not following, you should do that. Um, we were talking in, you know, again, I probably should have been working, but instead I'm watching crowjack. <laughs> and we were talking about Ashes of Creation, and we had mentioned about the lack of health potions. Yeah, so when oh, yeah. I'm playing other Battle Royales or other shooters, there's usually a f decent chunk of healing on the ground. So that after I get into an engagement, at the end of that engagement, I'm able to at least heal close to full and get back to full so that on my next engagement, I'm not, like, handicapped. However, in Ashes of Creation's version of their Battle Royale, healing potions are so rare, sure, you can charge up your armor to full between fights, and that's kind of nice. But half the time I enter a fight, if you have mana. I'm at 30 HP, if you have mana, but usually you, you do have it, mana. there's mana everywhere. Yeah. I'm at 30 HP, I'm at 40 HP, and all of a sudden the storms come. And the storm don't care about armor. It goes straight to your mm -hmm. HP. So you're at a massive disadvantage in the final circle, even with a dark packed armor on, if you're at 14 or 24 or whatever HP. So I mm. wish there was more healing somehow in the game. Part of my problem, and this is something I discovered pretty quick, I am not one for you know hiding in the corners. I am Vanguard always in the front. So yeah, instead of, I'm always running at people. The problem is yeah. when you do that very early on, you're actually hurting yourself more towards the final round because even if you kill the people, you're sitting there with beaten up armor or mm -hmm. low health. Yep. Even if you repair your armor all the way yeah. to 100 and you're sitting at like 17 health, you're like, oh, well, all right. Yeah. And the best way to get better at these kinds of games is to get into combat, is to get yourself into those situations so you know how to handle them. However, without that kind of healing between rounds to so at least get you back to full, it's to enter a new engagement, mm -hmm. like yeah. you said, it's super punishing. It's yeah. super punishing to play aggressive. Well, well, it, yeah, it really lends itself to the range combat, basically, because yes. you basically have to really, you know, do ranged if you don't want to lose HP at this point and do it well uh, to the point where you so you can get to those later portions of the mm -hmm. battle royale and then, you know, still stand a pretty decent fighting chance because you've got your HP. Yeah. But, also, you know. Steven, if you're watching, lower the volume on Meteor in oh, close yes, proximity. Please. Please. In the distance, I want to be able to hear it great. Keep it loud in the distance. Yeah. But when I'm like right beside it, it's exploding my eardrums and my chat is complaining. Turn the thing down. <laughs> What's actually <laughs> funny is you can hear it from so far away. It's like it's great. When you well, yeah, but it's sometimes it's so far away. Every time I hear it, I'm like, someone's close. And I'm like, where is it? It's the other side yeah. of the map. Yeah. It, so that's an issue. And I know. Uh, you had mentioned already as well. If you can get a life stealer, you will drop anything for yes, even a common life stealer. Life weapon is too good. It's yeah. too good in melee combat. You've got a pull arm. He's got a pull arm. You have life steal. He doesn't. Just by math, you're going to win with life steal. Life on hit. It's just. It makes every other melee weapon way too weak in comparison. It's too yeah. powerful an ability. Yeah. Either buff everything else or bring this thing down. Or add health potions somewhere else so oh, it doesn't feel go. like, you know... Yeah, health potions are so scarce. I'm with the Lifebringer axe in my hands looking for combat, hoping they don't deal enough damage to get through my armor so a couple swings can get my HP back up. Yeah. That's no. how scarce health potions are. Yeah. Mm. Honestly, I think, well... I think health potions should almost be as common as mana, or it should even stack like mana, so like it... But make it like a long channel time. You know, like mm -hmm. I've seen it done mm -hmm. in Fortnite again, but you know, you have, let's say you have a mana bar, instead of making an item, make it something you pick up, like health mm -hmm. reservoir. So then when you're channeling it, just like you would channel the armor, it will slowly yep. drain into your health pool. Well, Fortnite has two different things. It has the bandages, which give you a little bit of HP mm -hmm. over and over and over, and then it's got the full heal, 
And for the shield, it's got the mini shields that take two seconds, and then you've got the big shield that takes like five seconds. So you can have varying casting times and yeah. varying heal amounts on different items. And that would be really nice. It just a way of getting your healing back. I think that would make people want to fight more. I think it yes. would make people want to test melee more because melee is way too punishing right mm. now. Because like even if you yeah. win, you're hurt unless you have a life stealer. Yeah. You know. Yep. Yeah. 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 The main thing with melee is that you got to get the drop on. Like, if you get the drop on, you can manage to kill him before him or her yeah. before they do any damage. Three yeah, swings in good. before they do anything. Exactly, and that's how most melee combat goes. But if you start trading blows, then you know, even if you win, you're in you're in tough straits, and do somebody you, else will come. Do you really <laughs> win? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you win, but third man in wins in the end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because a lot of times, I I make it pretty. I won't say pretty far, but I'll make mm -hmm. it till like the last 10 or 15 people. But by that point in time, because I'm one of those people who will just charge anyone down. Yeah. I'm already hurt. <laughs> you know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm walking around. Yeah. I may have full armor, but I'm lucky if I have more than like 25 health. I am happy. They absolutely nerfed Dart Pact into the ground. Yeah. I'm happy for this because winning gameplay involved having three Dart Packs sitting in the final storm and alternating switching armor, activating dart pack. 10 seconds later, switch armor, activate dart pack. It's yep. now, instead of 100% remove storm damage, 50% remove storm damage, mm. which means 10 damage a second, which will kill you. Yeah. yeah. That was a big, that was a, a oh. well-needed change. Because even if you look at uh, the screenshot area of where people are posting mm -hmm. their wins, it's a completely different uh, setup before. It used to be yep. like all people like within the, you know, within the storm, basically, because mm -hmm. they'd use dark pack. But now it's... It's much more varied. You see people winning before, and yeah, yeah it's much You better. would sit in the storm on your third dart pack, spamming meteor into that little tiny circle, and everything dies. This mm. is exactly why they need more of this, this testing of the PvP, Bingo. right? Mm -hmm. You needed to know what do we put, what do we change, what do we do, balance these things out. Because right, you know, right now, it's all been theory crafting. Right? It was developers, but theory crafting. Until Let's you take, put it into action, yeah. then you got to see what happens. Two oh, minutes. Yeah. Everyone chimes in two minutes. This is an important topic that everyone's complaining about. I want everyone's thoughts. Catfall. Too mm -hmm. powerful, just right, needs to be removed completely. What do you guys think? Uh, that's a really good question. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I really believe that it's out of balance right now. Catfall is, is clear and by far and away the best, you know, bottom lower thing that you can use right now. And because Hell, of it, it's the best armor, period. Yes, it is. It's the best armor, period. I mean, you can, it's, it serves as both offense and defense. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can, you know, get to places where other people can't. So the other day I was jumping on a roof and I was just sniping people. <laughs> they couldn't get to me. And, you know, I just kept hiding around. And that's what it is. They didn't have cap all boots. I did, you know, suck it. And then so they left somewhere else, right? So, I'm, uh, yeah, I I'm think, torn. yeah. I, I'm really yeah. torn on it because there is that level of, I don't like it. Because almost everyone who has it ends up killing me because I don't have them as well. Mm -hmm. Mm. But then I'm sitting there going, "Well, they got it." For I'm, I'm, I feel like there needs to be more of a delay on it. It's a 10 second duration, and what's the cooldown? 20 second cooldown? 30 second cooldown? I don't know. I, I see people is. bounce all the time with Catfall. Yeah. yeah. I honestly think Catfall should be a one jump. You could do it once, and then it's locked for a timeout. Or maybe a little bit less height, a little bit more horizontal movement instead. But then yeah. people could use it as an escape mechanism. Which well, is I think what you said earlier when you could um, start timing it, right? If, if it yeah. works that way and there's a balance to it, that would work out. Because mm -hmm. you can time where they're going to hit or you can time where they're going to arc. Once yes. they launch, you can take them out. And that it's will a come matter with, of how to do it. That will come with experience and practice of the player mm -hmm. base. As yeah. a player's base gets used to seeing people jumping with catfall. By the way, if you're catfalling... If you're in the sky, the nightfall bow will destroy you. Oh, oh yes. Oh, look, you're gently oh, yes. floating. Click, click. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So maybe it is a bit of the, the player base needs to evolve and understand the mechanics of the game. Mm -hmm. But it, compared to any other boot or any other armor period, it's just so useful. The blink is nice, but you only get one blink, and it's 20 feet. Yeah. You're still on the yeah. ground. It does let you oh, blink cap. through walls, though, actually. It lets you, I never tried that. Yeah, because when you're in that one chapel in the castle, you can actually use yeah. it to port between walls. 
Whoa. Oh, yeah. Cool. Now, not the <laughs> thick walls. I'm talking the... We're not talking... We're talking, like, chest-high walls or, like, chest high walls, high walls. Those, the gated... The gate walls, yeah, okay. the confessional right. walls. Oh, interesting. But okay. if you can not lead some... No, but if you can... I've seen people lead people behind, uh... like, they're chasing, and then they pour it through and then turn around, and <laughs> they're, like, oh, crud, and then they're just pounding them through that wall. Yeah. So you can use that. And I see uh, that wolf in chat says, Catfall shown in the MMO stream today did look like you did not jump as high and did not go on for as long. That's true, but I would take everything we saw with the oh, Alpha sure. 1 preview sure. with a grain of salt because I can tell you they were using dev cheats to make sure that it was a clean stream. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. So we yeah. don't know if that was actually intentional or Peter just wanted unlimited jumps and added them in. Yeah. A little column I, I, A, a little column yeah. B. The funny thing is about this, remember when we first you know, were introduced to the Battle Royale, it didn't matter about the balance because it wasn't its own official product. Well, mm -hmm. here we are. And yeah. yep. now it matters a bit. Now it matters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now That's we're the biggest complaint. I see. <laughs> going going back into it. Now we're going to sit here and go, great. Are we going to need to waste development time balancing this as it comes out? And people realize, yeah. wow, Catfall is separate developers. Mm -hmm. mm, well, I mean, th that the concept of hiring a separate developer you're, that money could be used to hire a developer for the MM. You know, like you're not. Yeah. We've had yeah. this discussion. Yeah. We've had this discussion before. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. But you know, you know, brought it up and it makes more sense. Moving on to the next bit, and that was a fun discussion. I think we had that was actually probably one of our more fun discussions we've had talking about testing because it was fun to theory craft mm -hmm. about that. But we had some pretty neat stuff today in the live stream. Um, but before we do that, uh, I got to call Steven out. Hold on here, everybody. Because Steven decided to call out myself and our guild. So, here, we're just going to play that. Could you? Um, Agilos. Uh, uh, <laughs> I didn't even think about that. So, Agilos uh, asks, are you trying to get rid of us with that discarding Fate's Hand quest name? I think because their guild name is Fate's Hand. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All yes. According to plan. Oh, Please leave. No, yeah. <laughs> Agilos. But I already had your elf ears made. There you go. <laughs> no, just, yeah. Oh, that's great. So good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, that was pretty funny. Um, it was more of a joke than anything, but they actually had a quest that they were showing some of the questing stuff within the, within the uh, system, and the quest they picked up was discarding Fate's hand. So since our guild name is Hands of Fate, I asked that in the live stream chat, and he actually <laughs> answered that, so I clipped that. And yay for elf ears, I see. No, not cool. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed this latest Alpha 1 preview. There was a lot of good stuff in here, just from the aspect of the MMORPG that we backed. I know it was already set in the Al or the <clears throat> Apocalypse world, the map, but the questing system we saw, I really like that. And there's actually a few things I wanted to highlight, and I will add them on the screen here. Um, but let's just get everyone's opinion before I bring up the, the couple things I wanted to talk about. What were your thoughts? Let's go with Storms. No, nah, go with Alpha. Go with Alpha. All right. Um, well, I liked it a lot because, I mean, it showed the... Uh, again, I it didn't surprise me only because, you know, I I work as a product manager. I'm kind of used to this. I work with three separate uh, agile team or sprint teams. Uh, and so I kind of expected them to essentially do what they did and that stick the, the current MMO into the Battle Royale, what we're actually seeing. So it was pretty cool to go through and see all of these areas that at this point I've memorized. And so I knew exactly where they were running, exactly where they were going. Um, and, you know, it was just, it was nice to see the MMO in action uh, and especially nice to hear uh, things like, you know, we're planning on jam packing with, with, with a ton of stuff. They're well on their way. It doesn't sound like they're struggling uh, too much with what they're going to put in. So overall, very positive for me. <laughs> nice. Crowjack. Is everybody ready for this? Yeah. White Knight is doning his, uh, putting on his black armor. I hated it. Ooh. I felt like my time was absolutely wasted. I saw nothing new. I saw the same map. I saw the same quests. I saw the same quest box around the quest text in the same location from every other stream that I've seen so far. I'm itching for the actual Alpha 1 map. I'm itching for the actual Alpha 1 quest and Alpha 1 NPCs that clearly we're not going to see until, you know, the spring. And I understand why they made this 
because they want to help again to convince people and remind people hey this is an mmorpg i understand the logic behind it however i saw nothing new and that was very disappointing for me okay all right storms Wait, well, no, I, so i agree with both crowjack and alpha i was a little disappointed that it was in the same map um i hope it would be in a different map at least somewhat different uh, but i did really enjoy uh being able to walk through it with them and see the different parts of it being used differently and see some of the mmo stuff now i did hope they could go fishing so we see how that would work but <laughs> it was it was interesting i really did like it um but again i was a little disappointed that it really wasn't a new set for me uh exploration and pvp are the top things i like to do mm -hmm. not being able to see something new was disappointing mm -hmm. okay fair fair one thing that I thought was pretty neat, and I'm going to go ahead and bring that up here on the screen that they did show, and this is something that I don't remember them seeing anywhere else before, but it's a preview of the city management. Oh, that's right. They did show that. Yeah. Ooh, something new. I might hold, be wrong. Actually, hold on. <laughs> Let me, just for chat's sake, I'm going to put this in here so Crowjack is aware of what's going on. Because um, this one, they only flash for a brief second. So it's now in the Discord chat for yeah. us that you guys can see. But that was actually shown. There was an NPC that Steven walked up to, yeah. and it shows the node status for the system. And it, it's just a very, yeah. You know, Interesting. Tax so, yeah. rate percentage, mm -hmm. economic health yeah. percentage, yeah. statistician. Station regular troops, station advanced troops. This, see, this is interesting. This is new stuff. Mm. Even if it's just an alpha state and very, very rough, this is pretty cool. Yeah, this is something that I know I've not seen before. And for those yeah. of you who are on the uh, podcast, we'll do our best to describe this. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see it here on the screen. But it, you know, it gives a little screen saying, welcome to the city of uh, Eleron. Uh, it gives the current mayor, and in this case it was Steven, cultural yeah, influence of what city it was because this is an Empyrean elven city and mm. shows the number of citizens and the current tax rate. It shows a little progression bar for each thing from each uh, st uh, state, the crossroads, that, which now we know the name of the first stage, which is crossroads, which mm. is interesting. I guess that would be well, let's see, a couple one, two, NPCs. Three, four, five. Yeah. Couple mm. couple, yep. yeah. Then yeah. we have a camp. Then we have a village, town, city, and metropolis. And this was a city sized area. So he said, I don't think it was that large, but regardless, it shows your trade agreement. It actually says if you have a trade agreement with another city, mm -hmm. they currently had none, but that is there. Um, alliances with, and this says the metropol uh, metropolis of Anat. G-A-N-T, and at war with none. So it's showing a war status, alliance, and trade agreements. And then they also have, and this is a part that I think is pretty neat, they actually have different stats on the city. In this particular case, they have the economic health, stationed uh, regular troops, stationed advanced troops, stationed elite troops, and freeholds uh, paying fealty. Mm -hmm. mm. This is really cool. <laughs> This I, is the kind of stuff we've been itching for regarding the MMORPG. Mm -hmm. Let's give it foreshadowing, absolutely. Yeah. So, nice. do you want to change your thought there, Crowjack? No. <laughs> Everything except that sucked. This is really cool. <laughs> Fair. Fair. One thing, did you guys notice, the one thing I found weird was the farmers. Uh, I mean, the farmers look like they came out of Fifth Element, basically, and they were all, yeah. you know, they all were in the traditional <laughs> garb, and I, it, it just kind of threw me off for a second there, but you know, whatever. Yeah, they, they probably kind of have just to work on spreading out their uh, their costumes between their <laughs> different levels of, of NPCs. And uh, I know, chat, I know it's very hard to read um, because this was taken a screen cap from the live stream, but I just posted in our live stream chat on twitch.tv slash Dungeon Crawler Network um, a recap that was done by Shaz. Um, so shout out to him. And he took a few screenshots as well, and it's a little easier to read from his screenshot than mine. But still, if you want to check it out, there you go. But this was neat. This is just something that I know we didn't know anything about, and it's a neat screen to see. So I was excited when I saw this. Um, the next thing that I'm going to bring up is this is going to be a little bit more of a, a question I guess we'll have here. And this is what I marked as an active event. 
I know it's a little small. I'm going to try to increase it in size. The words aren't as important as what it represents. And what this actually represents to me is the idea of active quests are... I'm trying to think of the word that best works for this. Uh, anyone, if, if you played Guild Wars 2 or Final Fantasy XIV, the fate system? In fate system, mm -hmm. yeah. Because the way they described it was they found a caravan that had a quest. I'm curious if this is not a quest that's always there. So it's like the active events system in Guild Wars mm -hmm. 2 or fates in Final Fantasy XIV. So, so based on a quick the... throwaway comment, yes. Because... Um, one of their comments was, oh, they'll be here when we get back. So possibly. Is that because it was just the demo? I don't know. Because right? they, so, like, they eh, used a know. very specific word about it being an event quest. Mm -hmm. They did. Mm -hmm. So that's my thought about this, whether or not. That was something I really loved about Guild Wars 2. I know when it was first brought to us, it was it was brought up to be this massive thing um i see the donut taxes can we discuss taxes that will be a future episode sir so stay tuned mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um they brought it up to be this massive thing that you just go out in the world and stuff happens around you and in reality it does but eventually it got to the point where you just you knew it was going to happen all the time you know the spawn points and the spawn times yeah mm -hmm. i don't know if you'll ever get away from that um probably not even the fate system in mm. Final Fantasy XIV, you knew where all the spawns generally were. There were a handful that would randomly spawn. Some of the big world boss ones would randomly spawn. But I actually like this method of questing. Regardless of the fact if it's redundant, I actually enjoy this more than the quest hub. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, you go I pick agree. up the quest hub and, you know, you have a guy. I haven't seen that caravan in a month, you know... Whereas, so what the developers hopefully will do is combine both. Give us the quest hubs. Give us the um, the roaming mm -hmm. kind of quests. Mm -hmm. Give us a bit of a variety. It'd be yeah. fantastic. Right. I'm I'm yeah. I'm really hoping they just do away with other than like maybe main storyline stuff or or rumor yeah. quest. I like the idea of rumor quests, which aren't even quests per se. Yeah. But like if you talk to a tavern, he gives you a hint, and it's mm. like. If you go out in this area, it's not even a quest. It's just maybe marks it on your mini map going, hey, in this big circle, I th I heard of a goblin attack. Mm -hmm. And when you, you go out there, there may be something, there may not, depending on whether or not someone actually did it. But I, I, I really think that the MMO genre is held back with the idea of you go to point A, you answer the question mark, and then you go to, you know, the exclamation mm -hmm. and go from here. But when you have to go out and explore, it, it adds that extra element of, even if I get a hint that there's goblins in a cave somewhere, they might be cleared out, but then I find something else. Mm. Yeah, see, Much that's a, a part that's really easy. It's really easy to to fix, right? So it's something that for some reason the genre has stuck with. These quests have to be in one place. They have to stay there in that same place. And they're not going to move around. They're not going to be randomized. I, I don't understand why. So it's got there's something in this genre that keeps it that way because it's not hard to make it random or change. Mm. One thing I notice a lot of uh, content creators and streamers talking about World of Warcraft specifically is that World of Warcraft over the course of its time has turned into this railroad track of content. And mm. you stay on the railroad track and everyone stays in the yeah. same cart on the railroad track and they try their best to keep you there and move you from piece of content to content to content. Whether mm -hmm. that's questing, whether that's time gated raids, um, et cetera, et cetera. And I wonder if that's why did they start doing that? Did they start doing that because players initially responded very well to that? Or do they start doing that because it was easier to develop? There has to be a reason why they went down that road being such a big company. And maybe other MMOs seeing that followed suit and did that quest hub system kind of thing going on. I think that's more it right there. I think you hit the nail on the head. Um, it, they kind of talked, a couple of companies have talked about it specifically. I think I remember hearing Richard Garriott talk about WoW specifically and how well they had done the quest system specifically. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it, it, the way he described it was essentially kind of like a factory 
of creating quests and you know grouping things and it's all kind of like fine-tuned you know to that matter yeah. so i i do think that wow's championed it that's their system and other companies have kind of piggybacked off of that mm -hmm. and said hey it kind of works well for them so why don't we do the same thing so, so who's going to be the person to like break the mold and try and come up with something new that will either succeed or fail i wonder who's going to do it it's going to depend right if you think about it you have that was in the real world back in the 50s, right? When Disney mm -hmm. came along and he made the Magic Kingdom and then he did the, the Haunted Mansion, right? That was supposed to be a walkthrough ride. Yeah. People were supposed to walk through it. But they figured <laughs> out how to move people faster. And they did that by taking this Omni mover they had done for the World's Fair mm -hmm. and they put it in the Haunted Mansion. Well, you're mm -hmm. doing the same thing with these quests. You're living in the same place. You're taking, like you said, tracks of people through at specific times, specific yep. places. They want to move them because they want to keep them moving in that track. Mm. Does that really matter anymore? Is the question. Does it matter to the genre? Do we have to have these tracks? I love Doom. I think Doom is awesome. I don't like being in a track. I have to follow their path. Yeah, But I love the game. Same thing Why here. Why do I so many it. people love Skyrim? Why do so oh, many people I love, love Skyrim? Skyrim? Because, oh. sure, there's a storyline, and you know mm -hmm. that's a storyline, but I'm going to go this way. But and I'm going to go this way. way. And I'm going to go over here. That's yeah. why I love, love it. It's yeah. the adventure mm -hmm. of you go out anywhere and you'll find something. That's it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So and are people itching for that in an MMORPG? Because we're so used to the World of Warcraft model, if we go the other direction, look, are people willing to go, hey, I'm tired of this. Let's go over here and try this now. Well, look at the world quest from Legion. Mm -hmm. How well that would, that's not a quest hub thing. They literally just like, yep, yeah, we're sure. going to randomly, well, not randomly, but we're going to, you know, randomly spawn these presets and you don't know what you're going to get and you just go out and do it. Now they made it a little mm -hmm. bit more easy because they put it on the map. So you knew there was stuff there, but the concept of you're not going to hub a to get your quest, you're going to go out in the world. You're going to do what you're interested in. In Legion, that took off incredibly well. It still actually did mm -hmm. fairly good in Warlord or uh, Battle for Azeroth, but Battle for Azeroth had some other issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The actual world quest system wasn't the problem. It was just the lack of other issues. That was something that people liked and got away from. Um, mm -hmm. Even yeah. going back a few years ago, Warhammer. Warhammer mm -hmm. Online did the public quest system, which was different. It was stuff out in the world that wasn't you picked up at a quest hub. You just walked out yeah. there. Oh, it's active. Let's do it. Rift also tried doing that with the Rift system. Yeah, they kind of got old eventually, but it was something new and exciting that as you were running around in Rift from the normal quest hubs, things would open up and you'd have to fight them. And that's on the Rift dev's shoulders for why that got stale. They could have changed things up. They could yeah. have changed spawn mm -hmm. times. They could have changed the areas. But no, mm -hmm. they just probably kept it the same for forever and everyone got used to the cycle and they got bored. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if they would have rotated it, it probably would have brought mm -hmm. a whole new, whole new level to it. The yeah. final, it's like using the same holiday, you know, event every year. It's like, come on, you want something new. Yeah, Why not am I doing enough. this again, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. The next thing we got up here is the final thing that I noticed from the from the line, fishing. 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 Yeah, that was fun. The fishing. Oh yeah. yeah. Hold on, I'm gonna. I'll post it here in chat. Pull if you guys up. didn't see it. Let's see this. Yeah, okay. No, I saw it. I saw it. All right. Well, I'm gonna put it here. Oh, Crowjack. There you go, Crowjack. Thank you. Um, I was babysitting my daughter. I was watching my daughter at the time. All good. Um, this. No, I didn't catch him fishing, but I saw them. No, because it wasn't working yet at that point. But it shows you the fishing <laughs> interface, the rare type of fish that's there, the bait, the times of day that you have to wait for it to be there, and a difficulty level, and a little bit of lore behind it. That's actually kind of neat from an RPG perspective. One <laughs> thing that I thought Final Fantasy did incredibly well was the time of day temperature and stuff like that actually affected what fish could be caught yeah. yeah i love the time of day i love the different bait being required to catch different fish as opposed to just put rod in water and catch random stuff that's really cool it shows yeah. depth to the system right yeah and, and it was neat and that was yeah. again yeah. these are some of the features that we that we're not seeing so far mm -hmm. that make us feel like it's a real mmo and it's really exciting but through seeing mm -hmm. some of this they're Obviously, they've been working on it. They yeah. haven't brought it into testing it for on purpose, but they've been working on it. This is thought out. Uh, there is a, there's one last thing that I noticed, actually, from it, and I think it came from the questions. Did they ever specifically fully go into the stock and investment system before? No. 
They, they've never... I, I didn't think so, because that got me pumped thinking about it. If you, Think about it. If you're, if that's a way of making money, is to invest in guilds and guild successes and in nodes, that creates a tie-in to other guilds and other companies mm -hmm. where if they get attacked and you have money in them, mm -hmm. you have an incentive to go over and help I them in any that. way that you mm -hmm. can. And there's then that. there's the other intrigue that you can kind of add in where you can potentially buy off somebody who is invested in them or something of that sort. Mm -hmm. And it adds in a whole other layer that I thought was fascinating that I just like to mm -hmm. sit down sit and just think about you know incentivizing play players to, to participate them. yeah, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. we actually okay. did an episode way back i think episode like 12 <laughs> about <laughs> the 10 or 12 something like that very long ago about the um the stock exchange and everything like that so if you're interested go check that out i had some really cool people on the show for that most of them had financial degrees, which was neat. Um, mm. But as we learn more, that will be a topic coming forward again in the future. Because mm -hmm. a lot okay. of it is once we learn more, we'll be revisiting a lot of the topics that we are currently have now. So that'll be a lot of fun as well. All right. That's the end of the Alpha 1 preview, which was really exciting to see. I mean, they did have a few questions at the end. Some of them were good, some not. Um, Mine, not so much. We're going to move into the final bit of discussion for the show to wrap up the show. This has been brought up several times. I'm going to bring up one final image on the screen itself, and it is going to be a fun one. Actually, I should probably bring up two. I'm going to bring up the first one here, which is the APOC questing. And the reason why I want to bring this up is I want to highlight one thing in particular. You'll see it here. It shows both the standard path and the legendary path. There are a handful of quests in the legendary path that are not in the standard. So keep that in mind. We have that image up here on the screen. One of them is called the Potions of Cure. I don't know if it'll probably be randomized, but just for the argument's sake, that's what we're going to do. Keep that in mind. All right. I'm going to bring up the next image here, which is the actual legendary path versus the other path there we go I just have to unlock this bad boy and actually make it so it's not covering our entire faces there we are okay so this is if you played any of the battle royale games in the past you've probably seen this before it's very similar i actually first time i think i seen this was in maple story 2 when my wife was doing the uh, alpha test and they had a essentially a line for people who bought the legendary pack and those who didn't Okay, I'm going to preface this one more time because it doesn't seem like people understand. Sometimes on the show, one of us will take a stance that we don't necessarily agree with <laughs> for the sake of argument. It doesn't necessarily mean that we believe that, but it's boring if all of us say the exact same thing. So on this particular show, I'm going to play devil's advocate. The question is... Is the legendary pass pay to win? We've actually seen this brought up on Reddit. We've seen it brought up in the official Discord. Yeah. We've seen it brought up on streams already a couple times. People are claiming that the legendary pass is pay to win. There's another argument going around that it's unfair that lore is, pr is purposefully locked behind the legendary pass. Uh, and that's why I showed that first one, uh, the first screenshot first, which showed some of the daily quests. One of them had to do with finding five potions of Kier, and it actually gave a little bit of lore about who Kier was in, at the time of Vera. So people are saying, like, the standard line has you do just random things like, hey, go kill 10 people or get headshots or win games. And then they have the cool lore ones hidden behind the legendary pass. Okay. What are you guys thinking about that? Is that really hiding lore behind a legendary pass? I don't really know. We only have the one screenshot. And yes, some of the lore achievements were in the legendary path, but was it randomized or not? Is it really a bit, are we getting lore from that or can they just read it 
Like my personal opinion, and I'm I'm gonna actually not argue on this one. I think it's kind of a weird argument to say lore is being hid behind the legendary pass because you can still read it, and when you unlock it, are they gonna do something extra that makes it, you know? Otherwise, you just got it. Thoughts? It was just lore, no, because it's gonna be on a wiki somewhere within two mm-hmm. seconds. Uh, and that lore and that, I'm well worried about it. It'll be out there. And if you're the kind of person who doesn't want to go to the wiki to get your lore, you want to experience it yourself, there's no box cost to this game, and you're already mentally deciding that you want to pay $15 a month, a subscription fee to play this game, paying $25 so you can go and get that lore yourself because that's so important to you, do it. Pay your 25 bucks. Go and get that lore yourself as opposed to going to the wiki and finding it. You're already paying zero box cost. You're already willing to pay a regular subscription for the MMORPG. Go ahead and pay a subscription for this. You can go and get your lore if that's super important to you. For the rest of us, which is 99.999% of us, we're just going to go read a wiki and find the information there. Alpha, what about you? You've been quiet. So uh, I've, I've thought about this a bit. I, I think, and this is coming from somebody who gets this for free for life, apparently. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't think I don't think putting lore behind a paywall regardless of where it is, is a good idea. Now, if what we're seeing there, and you can just cl- you know click on it and read it, you can, and that's all the information that you really get, that's perfectly fine. I don't see any problem with that. But if you have actual lore and actual things that have to do with the game, the act, you know, actual game, then I think that's, it's, it's not exactly pay to win or anything like that, but I don't think it's the best look to, to, to put that part of the game behind it. Cosmetics, I get, because cosmetics are just, fluff or anything like that but a lore uh while i'm not hugely into lore like that i get why some people that's why some people play the game and to them that is that is part of the content and putting it behind an extra paywall i think is it's it's not pay to win but it's not the best look fair i'm a big lore nut as some of you know i mean i've done an elder scrolls online podcast tales of tamriel you can check it out right here on friday nights at like 11 p.m eastern because i have a co-host from turkey and all over the world so that's a fun show um but lore is something that's pretty important to me i know i've spoken to steven about it several times we both actually share a very deep love of tolkien and all of his works in fact i'm actually listening to the silmarillion again because they finally released it on audible I own that book like six times, okay? Like I have like three copies of it, like hard copies. I have the the audiobook on cassette. I still have the audiobook on cassette. I have the audiobook on CD, and now they released it on Audible, and I have it there too. I adore lore. It really adds to the world. So, yeah, I can see that being a problem. But, again, we don't know how much lore. Is it is it something where, like you said, you highlight over it and you get the lore? Great. Do they give you a book to read afterwards or a cutscene? I doubt a cutscene, but you know, something like that, that if you don't have the legendary pass you're missing out on, I I feel like that might be a a bit of an issue as well. But moving on to the big question, is the legendary pass pay to win? You can look at that screenshot right now. You'll notice that there are cosmetics in there. There's cosmetics on the standard line as well. Um, But there's something else on there that you may not have noticed. Experience boost. Every level of the legendary pass, you get an experience boost. And the argument, that's pay to win. Because let's face it, you then have an advantage over other people. You are gaining more experience faster. Let's go ahead and jump into that. Who wants to argue with me first? Convince me. I am that guy, the meme. Legendary pass is pay to win. Convince me otherwise. God, no one? I'm holding in no, all I, my I can do it. I'm, I can do it. I was just waiting for... <laughs> I, I want to explode like a fiery supernova of rage. I'm going to let someone else take the chance to talk first. Well, all someone right. has right. to talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right. Let me, let, me, let me do it then. All right, fine. So in the context of Apocalypse itself, then I would say it's pay to win. If your goal is just to... Go ahead and, you know, accumulate cosmetics. Who knows why you would. We're ignoring the MMO at this portion, and you're just focused on that. Sure, it's pay to win. But Apocalypse isn't in its own sandbox. The purpose of Apocalypse is to 
uh, well, enjoy the BR on one, but more specifically to earn cosmetics. And cosmetics don't have an effect on your gameplay. It's just merely fluff, right? So in the larger you know, scheme of things, when we're talking about Apocalypse as its relation to Ashes, I don't think it's pay to win at all. I think it's just a different met or another method to get cosmetics in order to enhance your character in, you know, one way, form, or another. Okay. Um, yeah. So does or is your character more powerful with more experience in Apocalypse? No. 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 Then it's not pay to win. Mm. What if that's, I see, I, I'm going to argue with that again because here's the other issue. You have two things coming up. And I, I mentioned this in our Discord, and some people don't believe me, but there's a lot of people. Fashion is the real end game. In MMOs, fashion is the real end game. In Sea of Thieves, Crowjack, fashion is the real <laughs> end game. Cosmetics. And yet, it, no cosmetic will make you any better at Sea of Thieves. No, if we're not. We're, but in terms of an advantage, we're getting there. We're getting there. Okay, here we go. All right. Can I go. I'm oh, hold go. on, hold on. I'm going to make this statement, right, then I'm going to let you go. All right, so we have cosmetics as a way of personal gratification or also a way of showing off to others. You have a time-limited event, which is the battle pass itself. We don't know how much experience it's actually going to take in order mm -hmm. to actually max it out and get everything that you may want. But with the legendary pass, you now have a cumulative effect of these experience buffs to make sure that you get everything that you were wanting first and that you get it before it goes away. Crowjack, go. Mm. In the past 180 seconds, I've added other factors to my decision and my explanation. You ready for this? Okay, I'm ready. Right. Okay, right. pay to win? No. Pay, to, pay for convenience? Yes. Paywall? Oh. Yes. You ready for this? Okay, this all, is right. Fast all, right. all right. From the sole perspective, of the entire game, if you are the kind of person that loves cosmetics, your game is having cosmetics and collecting cosmetics and like Pokemon, gotta catch them all, if that's yep. your game. Yep. For you, this could feel like pay to win because they're behind this paywall, but that's actually what it is. It's a paywall. If you look in that path specifically, those cosmetics in that golden path are not available in that silver path. That's not pay to win, that's a paywall if cosmetics mm. are your game. Mm. That's a wall. You can't get those if you don't pay. So yeah. therefore, that alone is not a pay to win. It's a paywall for the cosmetic lover. It's right? a pretty strong argument. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're not a cosmetic lover, but you kind of are, it's not pay to win, it's pay for convenience. Because those bonus experiences will help you get those things faster. They don't unlock them for you instantly. It's not, here's 15 bucks, give me all 51 cosmetics. It makes it more convenient for you to do it quicker. That's next Now week. to the, uh, mm. the ultimate argument of pay to win. If I have a sword that does 10 damage, and in the store, there was a sword that does 100 damage for 15 bucks. I can spend 15 bucks and get more power. That's pay to win. If I am leveling up and I get more experience in the MMORPG, or I can get a faster mount speed through the store, or I can get faster resources through the store, or I can get cheaper merchant fee deduction through the store, that's pay for convenience. Maybe pay to win. Oh, pay mm -hmm. for convenience. Mm -hmm. Pay to convenience. I, I love that term. <laughs> I love, love that, that term because pay to convenience. Oh, people are always using that term of it's pay to convenience. It's pay to convenience until mm -hmm. it becomes if you don't have it. Can you even compete? Can you even compete? Let's put it yeah. this way. You know, ESO is a perfect example of pay to convenience. <laughs> you try to do anything in ESO. It's so inconvenient if you don't. If you don't, if you're not paying without yep. the craft bag. Yep. Without oh, the, yeah. the merchant, the banker. Mm -hmm. There's like if like and you also the limited bag space. Like you're not gonna be able Okay. Yeah. At that point, you're already going and, and this I know we're making this, but since we're already jumped to the pay to convenience, let's just mm -hmm. extrapolate on that and go, Okay, well if this is okay to do, then what mm -hmm. happens if oh well I'm paying for extra bags, you know you could pay for it or you could earn it in game. It's pay to convenience because I don't want to yep. earn the money in game. Yeah. That yep. money, the people who did pay it that way, that's money uh, that they are now not using to protect their cities, pr gear themselves out, and you get to save that amount of money by just throwing down your credit card. Pay to convenience. And don't you think 
for a company that has sworn up and down that pay to win is the devil. This is the <laughs> devil and we will not have it in the game. That pay to convenience is an awful gray area that they probably don't want to work with. Um, what we're looking at here on the screen is not pay to win, pay to convenience, or pay to anything on the MMORPG that they've sworn against. This is a mm -hmm. different game style. This is just a. Okay. They have not sworn against pay for convenience or paywalls <laughs> or pay anything for the bet. BR. They've never said that. Okay. They've all right. So that. that's using yeah. the same argument that it's like, okay, I run a church and prostitution is bad. But if you step outside, I also run a brothel across the street. But it's separate. <laughs> and it happens all the time. So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not letting you buy prostitutes in the church. But if you walk across the street to the other there establishment I own, you are therefore allowed to get my prostitutes. Uh, I'll give you a buy one, get one sermon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in, okay, let's bring it right back. In no definition of the word pay to win, can cosmetics be considered pay to win? Unless you, as an individual person who's not part of the regular people, love cosmetics and consider that the end game. For the rest of us, well, for the majority would... of people, cosmetics do not fall under pay to win. You're making <laughs> Unless it... they offer you stat boosts. The mm. believe that, but I would agree. Do, well. you, do you think, with the final bit, and this is what we'll wrap this up with, the last word I used, do you think this particular thing is going to come back to bite them in the butt because they are so anti-pay to win, the first person who looks at this and brings up this argument will then bring a lot of doubt onto the MMO. People we already are, man. People already yeah. draw. I know, but that's saying, like hey, giving them gasoline. Boost in this game, but are there are there not going to be XP boosts in the MMO? Like for some reason, they're perfectly synchronized. <laughs> if there's XP boosts here, we'll see in the MMO. That's not necessarily the case. People are already drawing those parallels because again, the trolls are finding easy but ammunition to shoot. Yeah, you're right. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. But they wouldn't have that ammunition if we didn't have this. <laughs> but because we chose to do a battle royale, not uh, we, them, mm -hmm. they, Fair. chose to do a battle royale, what you're looking at is in every single one. This is, this is par for the course. This is by default in the battle royale gaming genre. This is nothing new. This isn't shocking at all. But, it's true. But because there's an MMO tied to it through the transfer of cosmetics, Mm-hmm. People are scared. People yeah. are worried. Let me ask this. How would you then, if let's just say this goes away, how do you mm -hmm. monetize this? How do you make this, or, or not even monetize to get money from it, but specifically to pay for itself? How do you make sure that it pays for itself? Like, what would you suggest doing? The only other option the is doing um, a daily rotating store of cosmetics like mm -hmm. Fortnite does, mm -hmm. but then that means you need develop, you need artists to continuously create these cosmetics. Like you don't think mass. they're gonna have to do that each and every month or each and every ten weeks or whatever? Luckily I think they're for gonna what have we're seeing to. here, what we're seeing here mm. is a lot of recolorings of mm -hmm. maybe eight skins. Oh yeah, you'll see that. Fair. Yeah. So we're very fortunate Fair. So for this that? month, for this for this yeah. Exodus. Yes. But maybe, in there, maybe, it, it, maybe after a few seasons of this, the income starts to come in. They can hire in more artists and they can and get the engines going. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see how that goes. All right. And in, in their defense, they can then use those cosmetics, like you said, within the right, MMO. Yeah. But the other problem is, can they really do that? And the reason why I say that is, are people going to be crap in their pants, essentially? Because I bought that in apocalypse and now i can get it as a drop it was supposed to be exclusive why did i ah, even that's bother a really good question mm -hmm. why did i even bother buying it? it it'll come up it'll, it'll come, come up. up as of right now anything we find in apocalypse can it be found in the mmorpg without playing apocalypse great i don't know no has anyone even asked steven that question Steven, are you in the chat? Hello? Oh, no. Uh, sorry, say that question again because I, th I think he did say something Let, about it. um skins in the apocalypse that we see here yeah can they be found either from dungeon boss drops or random mob drops in the uh, MMORPG without having touched Apocalypse? Or I, are these cosmetics Apocalypse, Apocalypse cosmetics, and the only way to get them? I think he stated that they're Apocalypse cosmetics and there's mm -hmm. the only way it's the only way to get them. So you can't replicate and pick them. But then yeah. what then what are they doing to transfer the MMO? Earn it in here, click a button, send a account. Well, yeah, know. no, no, no. I mean I get that. Oh but yeah. But what yeah. are they using? Because the main argument of Apocalypse was that this is going to help. Any assets we use here is going to go into the MMOs. But if it's what if assets they can't really reuse? What if they're assets mm -hmm. from the MMO that get the funky colors in Apocalypse? What if the, that axe exists right. from this bo boss drop and it's yeah. a regular looking axe? 
And then next season in the apocalypse, they give you a whole bunch of reskin options for that axe. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what's that's gonna happen. That's actually exactly it. He he did explain that's mm -hmm. what it was for. So for each of these skins that you see within the game, essentially there's an already existing item. Yeah, within the MMO, and let's just say Agelos, you're a blacksmith, right? Mm -hmm. You create you craft swords up to like level ten. One of these skins you know, would be a variation of your level one ax made out of X material, right? Uh, so that you could potentially add a skin to that. You could not add it to everything else, but it's only available mm. for that. So all of these things already exist within the game. They're just reskin. So they're designed in the MMORPG and then made fancy for Apocalypse and you can then slap onto the MMORPG. Right, right. Mm -hmm. mm, interesting. Mm. They're Indeed. They're gonna make these transferable. They're all within the same engine. Yeah, exactly. Fair. All right, guys, that is going to be our show for the night. I hope you guys had a lot of fun. And, of course, if you are watching live on twitch.tv slash Dungeon Crawler Network, make sure you stick around for the post show. Of course, if you're not live, all of our patrons are at patreon.com com slash dungeon crawl network will get access to that post show after the case i want to thank my amazing co-host we got storms lord from digital piper studios we've got alpha soul who has his channel where he does a bunch of the ashes news and of course the one the only crow jack you guys all know him find him anywhere that says crow jack you'll find him there of course myself yep. jealous find me on twitter and all of our information is in the podcast description below check all of that out thank you so much everyone for showing up live you guys are amazing and you can follow everything we do over at dungeoncrawlernetwork.com there you can find links to all of our social media including twitch youtube twitter and facebook who uses facebook still i don't know be sure to check out our patreon program patreon.com slash dungeoncrawlernetwork if you want to help support the show you can also do that by leaving us a five-star review on itunes so people know that we are a real podcast but we say real Real words and sometimes they matter thank you so much for joining us on this episode of from the ashes and we will see you next time see you later everybody bye guys <laughs> <laughs>